Hey guys, today I am going to teach you how to make lens flares and other lighting effects for your images in Photoshop. To start off, uh, there's a few ways that you can actually achieve this effect. You can buy brushes and there are actually plenty of lighting bokeh brushes on the market that will actually work very well. Or you can buy a plug-in, and if you're going to go that route, I highly recommend Knoll Lens Flare or Light Factory. It's by Red Giant Software, and it creates really marvelous effects, and it has all kinds of settings so that you can tweak them to perfection and get some really neat lighting. But today I'm going to teach you how to do it in Photoshop from scratch. <clears throat> if you're on a limited budget or if you just want to kind of learn how to control things on your own um, this tutorial is for you basically to uh, learn how to do it pretty easily and simplistically. To start off I've loaded my scarab for my last tutorial that I painted and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add metallic glints or glints of light to it to kind of bring out the gold and make the gold look even more shiny as if it was a picture taken by a lens. To start off we're going to add a new layer to what I already have here and I'm going to choose a color and I want to pick a color that's from my gold itself because we don't want white and we don't want blue or something like that. And then we're going to choose a soft brush. Make sure our mode is on normal. And that actually might be a little too big. <clears throat> and then we're just going to dab in areas where we want our light. And that's actually good because it would show that the light source is coming from one direction. But you can add other glints too if you want. I think for now I'm just going to stick with that. And you can add smaller ones if you want. So like there. Or even smaller. To like here. Just to kind of get different sized lighting glints. And then we're going to duplicate this layer. Now this is the part that usually takes a little bit of experimentation and it's going to change every time you do it because your lighting in every scene that you do is going to be different. So you're going to want it to blend differently with that scene. So you kind of just mess with the modes to fi find something that kind of really matches what you're, you know, you're playing with or what's in the scene itself. And uh, it can take a few minutes to get something good, but and let's, let's mess with this one. Oops. Clicked too many times. I think that one's not too bad. Let's change this one though. We really wanted to kind of, you know, bring out the scarab like it's a real piece of jewelry, you know, with real metallic glints coming off of it. And this is, you know, not really working out for me too well, but that's the way it goes. You just have to keep playing with it until you get something. And actually I like that. And let's change this to like heart now. Burn. But anyway, you get the general idea. Um, <clears throat> and then you may find that, you know, you don't like 
that many things. So, I mean, you can always erase some of them or make some of them less prominent than others and get something like that you really, really like. That's actually not too bad. I think that one is a little too big and prominent. And you always want to do it like this. You don't want to use your dodge tool for the specific reason that when you're actually doing this in a scene, you want your lighting to kind of fall off whatever you're lighting up. So you, you want this soft blend to kind of bleed into the image too because light would be, you know, eternal, well, to some degree, you know, and it would keep traveling off of what's being lit up by the light. Another thing that you can do is create anamorphic light by simply changing your roundness. And what anamorphic light basically is, is a distortion that is created by a lens. And, and these are natural distortions that would happen with lenses as the light enters them from certain angles. But that's just for demonstration. You don't have to. And I'm just going to keep, you know, this on 50 or 100%. Um, and I'm going to close this out because now I'm going to teach you how to make a lens flare. And for this, we want a bigger brush than what we have actually loaded. Something like that. Um, but we want to add that on a new layer. Always, always, always add everything to a new layer. And that looks pretty good. And you're just going to create, for starters, just a speck. And then we're going to change our brush. And we're going to add another layer just below it. And we don't want this layer to be too thick. Hmm. We want it to be kind of thin. But we want it to be pretty dark, such as that. Then we're going to go to our motion blur. <clears throat> and we're going to turn it up pretty high because we want it to spread that glob we just painted pretty far. And we're going to keep duplicating this layer until our first star, part of our star, shows up more prominently. And we're going to duplicate that. And we're going to rotate it 90 degrees to make something of a cross and duplicate it again and this time we're going to rotate it by hand and we're going to make that and actually I'm going to scale it down too while I'm at it because I want this to be smaller. You don't have to make it smaller but that's just what I want to do. <clears throat> And then we're going to duplicate that again and flip it horizontal to make a full start. And then we'll merge these down so that our star is on its own layer away from our glint itself. And actually, um, normally if you have your star and it's thin enough, you can hold control and click this to select it and then you can modify this by contracting then selecting the inverse and cutting away. That will actually thin it out if you find that you have a little bit too much of an effect or the star is too fat. So we'll just go with that. Now you can see here it's kind of cut off and we don't want that because that's an ugly effect. So we're going to take our erase brush and set the opacity, the opacity rather, pretty uh, low so that we can just kind of dab this away because we want the same fall off 
effect to apply to our little star filter here. Like this. And that's good. And now we are ready to merge it all down. So now the star is completely on its own layer. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that. And then we're going to mess with our modes just like we did with creating our metal glint. And that one actually I think needs to stay just so. And you can just keep doing this ad infinitum, you know, until you get something that you really like or something that really like matches the image well. I don't really have anything to apply it to except, you know, a black background. So I'm just going to kind of play it by ear. And you can also keep duplicating this. And then you can use a Gaussian blur to kind of make it even more shiny or make the light kind of bleed out even further. Just like that. You can even go back and uh, tweak your underlying. Actually, you know what? I like that. You can tweak this and get completely different effects with your star. Um, let's see what we can do here. And if you blur this out, it'll actually make it look like the star, oops, that's a little too much, is further away. So, I mean, it really kind of depends on your scene and how you want it to go. But to, uh, for example, if we uh, kind of tweak this, we can make it look like it's a very far star or supernova or something that's exploding in space. But I'm not going to do that. Then what you can do to add even more realism is you can create lens reflections. And where do I want my lens reflections to be? The key to doing this though is to make sure that you kind of change the size of them because they wouldn't all be the same. And uh, you can actually even change the color too because uh, with lens and light, you know, there's always a prismatic effect. So you can, you know, even, you know, change these singularly or, you know, as a collective. Let's see, we want to select just that one and we can change that to like, you know, green, like a greenish effect and uh, you can change this one to a completely different color like maybe a red and so on and so forth that's actually probably a little too um, saturated for my taste so I mean you can come over here and desaturate it a little and then you can do the same thing you can duplicate the lens reflect layer and kind of mess with the settings here to get a good look. And I think I'm going to tweak now. I don't want to tweak that too much. That's actually better right there. That's perfect. <clears throat> um, so then when you're done making your lens and you have it exactly the way you want it, you can go ahead and flatten this image. Then you can desaturate it and then you can invert it. 
And what this is going to do is create a very different uh, kind of look to it. And sometimes you might want to even up the contrast or the brightness a little. And then you can come over here and click Define Brush Preset. What this is going to do is make it a brush. And then we want to come down here. And there's our brush, exactly how we wanted it. And we can create it as many times as we want. We can also apply the same anamorphic effect, lens squishing as it were, to uh, make it even a little bit more realistic, like the lens is actually kind of squishing the flare itself. And then uh, once you have this on a layer, you can still, you know, further tweak it if you don't like that lens flare for certain things. You can change the color, um, such as like so. I like the blue. You can even come to blending options, click gradient overlay. <clears throat> and then load a gradient and then get a, a kind of gradient effect going on it which is also cool sometimes I like to color my stuff using gradients because it gives it a nice rainbowy variegated effect such as this But I'm not going to apply that to this. And then once you also have it, you can kind of tweak it using your dodge tool even. Oops. By like adding extra spec to it or you can uh, duplicate it and once again apply filter modes to it. or not filter modes, layer modes rather, and get a really good effect that you like. And the best thing about this is that you can paint these lenses any way you want them. You know, you can make as many stars as you want. Um, just to demonstrate, you can kind of flip it around and <clears throat> make even more stars come off of the filter itself, or the lens flare, rather. Um, I mean, you can make it, you can turn it, you can spin it, you can do whatever you want to it, and that doesn't look very good. <clears throat> And I mean, my star was relatively, you know, simplistic, but you could like keep rotating them and uh, get even like more stars and you can scale this up. Make it look really prominent. Um, maybe erase the uh, reflections though because they don't look good in every instance and really get something pretty spectacular you can erase away and you can do all kinds of things so that pretty much covers this quick tutorial for today hope you had fun hope you learned something new and I'll see you next time. Bye.